Well, in my yard, the weeds have figured out a really neat trick for survival. Now, by the way, since I'm just freshly back from Germany, I thought I would share with you the German word for weed. And that word is Unkraut, which literally means no cabbage, or could be translated as bad cabbage. Leave it to the Germans to be able to use the word Kraut when even talking about weeds. Anyway, the Unkraut in my yard like to grow big and strong right in the heart of one of my rose bushes. So that if I have to reach in to pull them out, I risk tearing up my hand to get at the root of that weed. In our parable that Jesus told, he said that an enemy did this, and I certainly believe him. Now, like last Sunday, we have a split teaching in the gospel. We have the parable given to the unbelieving crowd and to the disciples who were there, and then we have the explanation that is given to just the disciples themselves those who would later become the sent ones, or the apostles. Jesus is the subject of all the parables. In the parable, the sower of good seed is identified as the Son of Man. The good seed is identified as the people of the kingdom, people of the Heavenly Father, which he has planted in the field, which is our world. And then Jesus introduces the hostile one, the one who plants weeds in the middle of the wheat, or in the middle of my rose bushes. This is the devil. The weeds are so close and intertwined that if you pull up a weed, you risk also pulling up a wheat plant along with it. And so Jesus instructs his servants who are clearly now being prepared to be his apostles and pastors, to not pull out the weeds, but to let them grow with the wheat until the harvest. Not until the end of the age will the, the evil one be separated from the righteous. The sons of evil will be collected and bound to experience eternal suffering while the righteous will be gathered together to a safe place where they will reflect the holiness of God. So my friends, what can we learn beyond a botany lesson from this parable of the weed and the wheat? Well, first, that in the visible church here on earth, there will be both genuine believer and hypocrite. And that the hypocrites are right here among us. Often, they like to hide in the midst of the bush, like the weeds in my roses or the weeds among the wheat. And, and they like to hide there to be hidden and to be nourished and to be protected. Jesus is contrasting his chosen apostles against the Pharisees those who pose as being part or being included in the kingdom by hiding among the kingdom people. How then can we tell apart them from the believers? Well, I gave the, the answer to the kids. It's by their fruit. Genuine believers will produce fruit, while the hypocrites will attempt to siphon off that fruit and, and interject their own false teachings right into the fruit of the believers, tempting the believers to look to themselves and to, reply, to rely upon themselves instead of replying, replying upon God. Remember, the believer doesn't look to his own fruit or his work for his own glory. Rather, the believer looks to the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the cause of faith and the cause of all good works. Next, we learn that the Lord instructs his authorized servants to not pull up the weeds and to let them grow together with the wheat until the harvest. 
There are some weeds, I've seen this myself, that when they are tiny, young, they mimic the plant they grow next to. You can't tell them apart from the actual fruited plants. Indeed, you won't know that they're weeds until it is time for the harvest, when the wheat will produce its fruit, which is seed, and the weeds will produce absolutely nothing. So we wait. We wait for the fruit. And indeed, waiting can be difficult. The thought of even tolerating evil in the world, let alone right among us here in the midst of the church. Who wants to tolerate bad fruit among the good? Indeed, it does seem like it would be a lot easier to just kick out the immoral one, get him out of our midst. In fact, the Apostle Paul, he warns the, the church at Corinth to, to cast out an immoral member of the congregation. But I want you to look at this. Paul tells them to not punish, but to rather focus the immoral member upon restoration and reconciliation. And my friends, when we remember what the great reformer Martin Luther said about simultaneously being a sinner and a saint, we wait, knowing that it is God who in the end will eliminate the weeds when the false teachers and the hypocrites will receive their punishment at the very end of the age. When, they will, when he will cast out evil, he will cast out the devil and all causes of sin into the, holy, into the internal fire. So yes, the church will struggle because of the causes of sin here in this world and even the work of the evil one within the church herself. This is why we believers in the church today are called the church militant. Many people today complain about the strife or the conflict within the organized church. Don't forget, this is to be expected. Remember what I preached the Sunday before I left for Germany. Jesus said that he did not come to bring peace. He came to bring what? A sword. One that will eventually cut down all the weeds. Nevertheless, and I would say above all, what we learn from this text is that already now, here in the church, true peace, true peace can be found through Christ Jesus. We find true peace in the means of grace where Christ dwells with us and does his ministry through us his called servants and in his grace we are already at peace at peace with God and at peace with our own future Jesus's death on the cross has sealed his pledge to redeem your bodies at a future date his voice in the reading of scriptures and the preaching of the word assures you that he is with you despite your suffering in an unbelieving world. His very body and blood, which you eat and drink together with the bread and wine, gives you certainty that you are forgiven for all the times that the wickedness of this world has sucked you back into sin. Even the very suffering that the church itself experiences here in this life identifies it with the sufferings of Christ. And in this way, through suffering, we are blessed. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. My friends, Jesus is speaking here the theology of the cross, where through suffering, a great good results. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. 
And so now, my friends, we wait. We wait because the world holds both belief and unbelief. But we are at peace because in the end, Christ will judge the difference and the righteous will shine like the sun. In the meantime, we wait in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now may the true faith which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus only.